the Aloha Friday and welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host Beatrice Cantelmo. On today's episode, we will be talking about two very challenging topics. The refugee crisis in Europe and the prevalence of N types of human trafficking that refugees are vulnerable to and the reasons behind it. We will also examine strategies that could be implemented that would help decrease human trafficking cases involving refugees not just in Europe, but all over the globe. We're very fortunate to have, I guess, Eva Hernandez Zeno, a graduate student of Hawaii Pacific University, whose study focus is on organizational development and change, and that she will guide us in this uh, dialogue. Well, thank you so much for uh, being our guest today. Yeah, thank you for having me on the podcast. I, I, love, I love this kind of collaboration work. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and... Uh, show is about perspectives and I think you have uh, some really good things to share with our viewers and uh, so before we get started you know in the you know hitting the road running uh, I would like uh, to give you an opportunity to let our viewers know where do you come from and uh, um, you know what are you studying and uh, you know where are things at in your uh, graduate studies yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I am from Mexico City, and my dream has been to do work that helps people in, a, in any kind of capacity of even like non-profit organization work or, or uh, you know, with IGOs. So, nice. I mean, yeah, it's been my whole time, my career has been devoted to any work in that area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but so I was, I did my undergraduate studies in international relations, and then now I'm doing organizational development and change. Right, so let's talk a little bit, what is organizational development and change? What, what do they focus on? And, and cause it's quite a unique uh, yeah. focus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we do, what we do is consultancy, and but my focus is going to be to helping nonprofit organizations take on challenges. I mean, non working for a nonprofit org is is can be challenging. Right. So, what kind of challenges um, do you foresee um, tackling and supporting NGOs with? Yeah, probably funding. Funding would be, you know one of the biggest challenges. And also really just making sure that the mission and vision really do solve some of the gaps right. that are around, mm -hmm. you know, the, the areas that states need, that cities mm -hmm. need. Um, so yeah, when I moved to Hawaii, um, I immediately noticed a thing of, you know, a gap in homelessness. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I immediately wanted to jump in and 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 help I, in any way I could. Right. So it just it just really aligned with with what I wanted to do. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. What brought you to Hawaii? Uh, my my partner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh well, that's the best way to be in Aloha is with the love, right? Yeah. That is great. Well, we're very fortunate to have you here as part of our ohana, and so. Well, today we're going to be talking about uh, your studies. So tell our viewers a little bit uh, of the background uh, of, you know, how did you choose to work on refugees and human trafficking? And what are your findings? You know, what, what are you learning along the way? Yeah, so, so um, I seek to, you know, and, and apply for the United Nations Model United Nations graduate program for HBU, mm -hmm. uh, which is the graduate school I go to, and right. they granted me the you know the opportunity, and the entire it just it just shot off after that mm -hmm. the opportunities, and really learning more about refugees and IDPs. Mm -hmm. What does IDP mean? So it's internal displaceable. Internal displaceable people. Right. So yeah, yeah. Uh, people you know who are within the country, but for some civil, um, for if any civil problem, they have no home or 
or anywhere to go to. So. Right. So the refugees that you are focusing on are come from which regions uh, mostly? So we've, we're focusing this this year. We're focusing on Syria. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So therefore, we're focusing on any anybody in Syria who is displaced or who is a refugee and likely there are probably a bigger target to human trafficking. Right. So let's talk about the connection between being a refugee, which you are already in a very vulnerable state, you know, being displaced, you know, you you yeah. you are countryless, you know, basically. And uh, um, what is it that makes refugees more vulnerable to human trafficking? And then what kinds of human trafficking are you able to uh, document that these individuals are you know, uh, experiencing? Yeah, so I think the, for the first question, um, refugees are very vulnerable. They have, I mean, if you think about how much time it takes for somebody to actually get refugee status, mm -hmm. it takes six months at the earliest amount of time. And that's in Europe. In the U.S., Mexican border, we yes. have to add maybe a couple of years there. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So, it, so that, you know, to, to answer that question, yeah, it, that's why... Refugees are so vulnerable into human trafficking. So, uh, when you see them being trafficked, is it happening in the encampments where they're waiting? Are they taking a different route and or being lured or offered something, and then they trust and leave and they get trafficked? Then, what's going on? What is the trend? So it. From the research that I have done is really about paramil paramilitary groups who are intervening in the conflict as well. Mm -hmm. But on, on, the, on that behalf, some people are really, really um, poor mm -hmm. and living in Syria. And so, they, so that's the only thing they can do. Right. And when you talk about human trafficking, war, because there are like a plethora of, you know, ways that a person can be trafficked. It can be sexual trafficking, it can be forced labor, it can be organ uh, yeah. harvesting, you know, legally. What, what are you all finding uh, then? What is the age, uh, if there's any track of like age of people who are being trafficked? and gender so what we've we have found so far uh, we, with my committee of the general assembly to the united nations that we're doing um it really is more focused on not on age but really women and children women and children so they are being organ trafficked like they will actually they will actually sell their organs because they have no economic sustainability. So wait a minute, let me see if I understand this correctly. So women and children are being trafficked because they're mostly vulnerable, but for organ harvest trafficking, so like what, like livers, kidneys? So the the most the most trafficked organs are the heart, liver, and kidneys. So wait, if you can't you can't donate your heart because uh, then you're dead. So these people are actually being murdered, uh, and 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 these organs are going where? Is there any study that tracks where they're going? They. So what it, it it's work just done with paramilitary groups and also I mean you can you think about Lebanon, Turkey, and Iraq. Uh, so they're just finding ways to solve solve economic economic issues uh, 
but based on really terrible human rights violations. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can't imagine harvesting one's organ, you know, in those conditions being yeah. a way to curb poverty, you know. Yeah. Um, so, like, what are the ways uh, that uh, uh, the investigative work is happening? Like, uh, people who survived coming back to report, or do they go to the hospital really sick from after the butchering that they have to undergo, and that's how authorities find out? Well, to be honest, the only work is done from organizations who are covering this kind of work. Mm -hmm. So Amnesty, you know, some of my sources are from Amnesty, mm -hmm. or UN News Sources, right. um, and CIA. Mm -hmm. So that, that's who, that's the only reports, you know, we get. Because mm -hmm. it's, so just, it's such a recent kind of, it's, such a, it's, a, it's a recent problem. It really is happening right now. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you really have to have, you know, a quick back kind of, um, like a quick kind of cover of it. So, therefore, some some type of documents take forever to to be to be published, or, published right? Yeah. And so, uh, so what is the global response like from the UN, for example, Amnesty, uh, with regards to these new investigative findings? Um, are there any urgent action that's about to going to be issued or ways to educate refugees about what they are vulnerable uh, of uh, and ways that they can maybe try to protect themselves? Is there any plan in place or talks about it? Yeah. So I think this, this is a really cool opportunity with HPU that you know, we get to go in and, and throw some resolutions or really research. Mm -hmm. And they will actually look at our position papers and, and see what we think about it and see all the work that we've done and consider it. Mm -hmm. um, but other than really would be the resolutions and right yeah. so let's talk about resolutions like for our viewers who are not familiarized with UN working resolutions how it works so you have an investigative uh, process and an issue that has been identified once you did both parts then there is recommendations and then what happens with those recommendations how do these recommendations and issues become a resolution at the UN so then you go to, you know, to the General Assembly, and then you ratify it. So it would be a ratified resolution or something that the more countries that are able to collaborate, which I think is really the, the purpose of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. um, and I really have to thank HPU because they have taught me that you know, that it really is right. a collaborative space. Power yeah. of many, yes. We're going to take a minute break and be right back. Cool. Awesome. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha.
Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice, Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, this is your host, Beatrice Contamo, and we are here with uh, Eva Hernandez Zenon. And uh, so, Eva, so we were talking about uh, um, you turning in the research that it's being done. Are you working alone in this uh, uh, investigative work, or do you have a, a, a partnership with other students? Yeah, we we have so we have other students working on it. And right. my close, my closest committee, so we are in mm -hmm. committees. Yeah, Keisha, she is, um, she's from China and she's brilliant and an awesome coworker to right. do this research with. So um, yeah, but there are a bunch of other, com other like, committees. Too. Yeah. Right. And so, so you're all gonna be working together and then the collaborative combined efforts of all of your studies will then comprise the uh, writing of the findings of your res like your, your studies and then goes to the UN and then then what then what happens what what would the UN do with your collective work so what we do then after the papers are all turned in so every committee has to write a paper and then we all turn it back in to our professor, uh, Andrea, Andrea Malji. Mm -hmm. And then she sends them out. So we have several edits um, to make sure that it is aligned with what we're doing. And to make sure that, you know, we, we did the research right. as we could. But yeah, so then after that, once it's there, they look at the, contact, the content mm -hmm. and they could send it back if, if something, you know, if something was wrong or if, if the... They need further clarification. Yeah. yeah. So there is a checks and balance yeah. and you, you have a process to follow through. One of the things I really appreciate about um, NGOs like the UN and especially Amnesty International is uh, how thorough they are with their investigative Work piece. Yeah, it takes a while to get done and completed, but by the time it is published, it is based on factual evidence, and they talk to so many different sources to be able to examine different uh, facets of, you know, a particular issue. So, um, in your ability, like as a researcher now and as a graduate student. Are you able, are you going to be able to travel, to see the site, or connect with other researchers who are in different like sites? Because you guys are looking at this in uh, Syria, but are there other countries involved? Yeah, there are a bunch of, there are so many countries involved in it. And it's cool, just when I was looking through the list of countries involved, there is there are even graduate schools and from Mexico, you know, for where mm -hmm. I'm from, mm -hmm. that will be involved. So I will be able to connect back. Right. And are they focused on uh, um, refugee uh, issues and concerns in Mexico border and in Central America? Or are they going to be working with different regions? So, yeah, I, I didn't exp specify. So every committee has one country or, or well, every, so as a, as HPU, we have Syria. So right. every other college mm -hmm. has a different country to focus on, but then they also have committees within and each committee focuses on different topics. So mm -hmm. my committee is General Assembly three, and then we focus on disability of of 
elderly, and then human trafficking and humanitarian aid. Right. So, so, so we did talk a little bit about human trafficking from a standpoint of, um, you know, the organ harvesting. And are there any other uh, types of human trafficking you are looking at? Also, like sex trafficking or forced labor, all the above. <laughs> I think all of the above. Oh. All of them are included in it. I mean, I don't think I, you know, it's it's a, it's on the research, yeah. Okay. So it's it's in there, but uh, also it's when you do research, you have to make sure you put, you know, footnotes or or what what kind of where the source comes where the source, source comes from, yeah. yeah. So it's really hard, sadly, to be able to know the death toll of how many people are actually being human trafficked mm -hmm. and how many people are, you know, just the organs are being harvested. Yeah, and it's, yeah. So you mentioned that within the scope of your study, you're also looking at disability uh, rights and elderly yeah. Issues. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think so for Syria, you know, which is what we're focusing on, the nation we're focusing on. Um, being in Syria, I can't even imagine it, first of all, but also being an elderly and not being able to maybe evacuate where you live and anything else. It would, it would, definitely be um, detrimental to, to your living circumstances. Right. And are there, because I'm so ignorant about uh, the population of Syria, are there a large percentage of uh, people who would be classified in that, you know, senior bracket? Or you guys still trying to sort that out? I'm not, I'm, I'm really not sure. So I would, okay. I would be lying if I, if I, you know, said something. Yeah, you, you're that learning. Have. Yeah, that, and that's okay. Yeah. You know? yeah, okay. But I imagine that regardless of percentage, that there are seniors that will have extra um, challenges, and regardless of whether the place is under conflict or not. But yeah, that really sucks for them because uh, not being able to move as quickly or having mobility issues, for example. No. And I think that could so, be uh, applied to pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Being disabled and not, especially as an elderly citizen anywhere, yeah. and not being able to move around, you know, and just evacuate yeah. for well, I, anything. I often think, like, of the largest, you know, famine in the world right now being in Syria and the largest humanitarian crisis. And we always have images of children, which, you know, it breaks, I think, everyone's hearts, yeah. and it's right there. But I really think about the seniors, and, you know, if some would, they're kind of, like, forgotten or put on, you know, like, oh, you already lived your life, you know, whatever resources we have, we may just look at the younger ones, you know, try to help them as opposed to someone who's, you know, older. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see what you find out in your studies. Yeah. And I'm really excited to be doing it. Yeah. And then with regards to disability, uh, individuals with, like, you know, um, functional abilities, what are the common functional abilities that you are looking at? Like physical, cognitive, and emotional. In regard of uh, of the disability, no, I think I think in regards with uh, you know that scope of looking at disabilities. I don't know if you're looking at just the elderly or if you're looking at all ages. Yeah, we're we're just so my topic. Yeah, is more focused on elderly with mm -hmm. disabilities, but. I think it could be 
definitely. Honey, yeah. Top down and just making sure that mm -hmm. children are also disabled. Anybody. Right. So I know that uh, part of your uh, gift is to be able to nurture those seeds of investigative work. Uh, craft uh, the findings, prepare the report, and then you release it to the world of the UN, and, and they are the ones who will um, decide uh, on any kind of resolution that they would pass. But if you had a magic wand and you could uh, say, I wish I could influence these kinds of resolutions, just from the little bits that you already studied on and found, what would these uh, resolutions look like? Like, if you can, if anything is possible, in the world of anything is possible. I love that question. That's awesome. <laughs> I would say anything with children, honestly. Okay. If a child can grow up and, and have any opportunity that they could have, I would be happy with that. Mm -hmm. There is nothing else that would make me happier than that. So yeah. that's very powerful too. And uh, so, like, if you were to think a magic wand for uh, women and children who are more susceptible to being trafficked, human trafficked, what kind of resolution would you wish to see it implemented? between countries because i know that this is an effort that has to be embraced by yeah, many countries no, right for sure yeah yeah i think women and children should be treated equally and really really powerfully thinked upon um but a resolution would be to do anything you can to help that. that group not being so vulnerable, right? Yeah. So safeguards, right? And yeah. uh, ways that the, uh, that would be the group. Yeah. programs, you know, that would prevent, that they would, yeah. you know, not so much work, intervention work, which is necessary, but the prevention piece of it, which is so crucial, education yeah. and, uh, and security and safety, right? You know, it's a big thing. Uh, Community security, resiliency, anything right, yeah. that can help women and children mm -hmm. be safe and grow up in this, you know, in our communities. World, yeah, and experience the good and the beautiful parts of, you know, uh, being a human being in planet Earth, right? In this yeah. path we call, you know, life journey. I can't believe the 30 minutes passed so quickly. I but know. I hope you'll come back many times and yeah. that your peers will agree to also come so we can get a little bit more of a blurb also of what they are doing. Uh, thank you so much for your you know, commitment to focus your studies in what you do. Yeah, and thank uh, you. For being so here. Excited. Yeah, absolutely. So cool. So, and uh, this concludes our uh, episode of Perspectives on Global Justice for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching us, and uh, until next time, uh, we hope.